the Argentinians are a very proud, very strong, very robust team. And if you give them a sniff, they're, they're, they're nearly impossible to control. It's the sixth episode of In The Know, thanks to GIO and Sporting News. This week, we thought we'd change things up a little bit. On debut, well been number 774, Nathan Sharp. How are you feeling, big man? Are you uh, you're going to rise to the occasion? Chris, I'm excited, mate. I don't often get a chance to sit down and talk specifically about rugby with someone uh, after a couple of good weekends of test matches, that's for sure. It's a very good week to be talking about it. So uh, same thing as usual. Uh, we're talking a little bit about, obviously, the Springboks game on the weekends. Uh, and then touching a little bit on Argentina. So let's get sure. down to it. 37-10. It was a it was a great day to be watching the Wallabies and being an Australia fan. What was your initial takeaways from it? Oh, look, I think first and foremost, I, I, I take my hat off to the team because, um, you know, the week before I thought the, the Springboks played particularly poorly. They were really inaccurate and they didn't have that same sort of ferocity in, in uh the collisions. So I, I sort of had a feeling that the second week around that Australia would be under, under a lot more pressure. And I think the way they came out and approached the game, the strategy around how they attacked the Springboks defence, you know, paid dividends and they, and they were clearly a stronger team in the second second test match. So it was fantastic to watch. And, um, you know, it was one of those one of those games that was never in doubt really by the intensity with which the Wallabies approached the game. What I was most surprised about was their defence. I mean, the Wallabies only made them make 69 tackles. They only made 50 of them. Maybe it was because the Wallabies, you know, they had that 94 and 95% tackle rate. They were so good with the Springboks seemed like they were, they were in all sorts. They did, and the Wallabies through their kicking game was good. A lot of the kicking game was was very good tactically. They put the, they turned the Springboks around. They made them... Um, their, I guess their defensive structures realigned because they were threatening in different areas which, with which the Springboks don't cope well with in their traditional rush defence. So I thought that was a really good part of um, the Wallabies game on the weekend in particular. I think they kicked more in attack than they had uh, in any other game and, and that certainly helped un unravel the, the Springboks defence. And finally, I just think some of the carrying from the Wallabies, you know, Taniela Tupo, Samu Karevi was outstanding. And once you get in behind a defensive line, particularly one that likes to rush up, um, it's very difficult to, to um, I guess, uh, reformat your defence and go again because you're behind the, you're behind the, um, the eight ball, you know. It's a good I guess, opportunity to touch on a few of those players. Taniela Tupo, uh, everyone's been talking about him. How can he not be such an electric player? 78 minutes of, of game-changing rugby had Few line breaks, few defenders beaten. Obviously, had that amazing pass. Um, <laughs> highlight real stuff from a forward. What, what's been yeah. the key to unlocking him? Well, look, I don't know Taniella, but I've been a big fan of his for a long period of time. And um, if I if I ever met him, I'm going to ask him about why he had to throw it like that. Why could he just do the, uh, the normal <laughs> pass? But you know, we love it, and I think that um, you know that offers the appeal that, that Taniella um, has around the world. Not only is he now world class tight head prop. He really is a bit of a unicorn, I think. He's so powerful and strong that he can maintain that right throughout the game. And as he's getting older, I think for a, for a long period of time there, potentially as he got a bit fatigued, um, he, he got a little bit inaccurate, gave away a few penalties and the like, but that's really starting to, to sort of be weaned out of his game. And, um, you know, Saturday was a tremendous example of that. Uh, are we building towards something special here or... Do you think it was just the right opponent for the game we're playing? No, I, I think it's a little bit earlier to sort of start talking about um, building something special. I, I'd really like to see the Wallabies uh, close the next two Argentinian games out strongly. They are in a good position. And what I liked about the last two weeks' performances is they repeated what they'd done or they'd stepped up again from the week before. And, and that's typically not been the case with the Wallabies for a long period of time. It's sort of a good performance and then it drops right off and then, and then sort of takes a while to get back up. So... I think the next two weeks are critical and um, from afar, you know, I've, I'm not involved in anything to do with Inner Sanctum, but I can see that Dave Rennie really starting to work on that consistency and selections help that too. So I think you'll start to see a bit more consistency in selections once, you know, as long as players can stay on the field. Right now, how do you think it's looking right now? Yeah, I don't think it's consistent enough um, just just yet. They're still finding some combinations there. Uh, I, I really like 
the last couple of weeks combination with Matt Phillip and, and Isaac, Isaac Rodder. I think that's a pretty stable combination. At times, the wall, the, the wall of his line out has been a bit um, wobbly, but you know, if you if you look at the people in that pack, there's not a lot of continuity between states there. So it does take a little bit of time for them to to find their find their groove. And having said that, whenever you play the Springboks, they're all seven foot three and um, they've got five jumpers. So it's a difficult a difficult challenge to win your ball um, all the time consistently. That's for sure. Well, let's talk a little bit about Argentina, um, outclassed by the All Blacks. Is there anything that the Wallabies can take from from those losses that they can look to exploit again? Yeah, I think I think just the pace at which the All Blacks played, you know, the, their speed at the, at the breakdown, their attacking kicking game as well, um, you know, it really puts defences in unease, uneasy positions, and that's what you want when you're trying to break the other defence. You just don't want to present the same situation every single time, so it's not a difficult read for them. If you can break it up and, and make it difficult for the decision makers in their individual position, it, it allows that defensive line to be broken down far more easily. So, I think variation in play will be really important. And and I'd be I'd be really um, disappointed if we went back to a you know a, a, a typical um, I guess field position box kicking type um, game plan. I think the Argentinians. You know, one of their one of their strengths is their ability to run the ball around. But if you can do, if you can, if you can control the ball with precision and, and be accurate around the breakdown, um, there's opportunities to to break their defence down. I want to ask you about Sean McMahon. You know, it's been four years since he's played for the Wallabies. He's now back in the setup. Uh, we don't know if he's going to be selected or not. But what do you think he brings to the side if he is? Look, I haven't seen Sean play for a long period of time, but when I, when I when he was here in Australia, you know, I thought he was, um, you know, heading in a, in a terrific direction. It's difficult to put him into the into the, the current team now. I really like the way Valentini and Swinton have been playing, and we'll, let's just park hoops because you know um, he takes care of himself. I, I just think Valentini and um, Swinton actually add that extra bit of size to the back row, yeah. and I can certainly see Sean McMahon coming into the game um, off the off the bench at some stage. But I think Lockie has shown enough that you've got to reward the, what he's done and, and, and help him through that period where he's, um, you know, a fine line between wanting to to hurt people and, um, and doing it legally, you know. So I, I'd stick with Lockie. All right, you're in the tunnel with the guys. You're about to walk out against the Pumas. What's your, your final message to the side? Just focus on the start. Focus on getting the, the, the first part of the game right. Well, whatever your first contribution to the team is, just get that right. And, you know, if, if, if they can focus on playing mistake-free football for the first 5, 10, 15 minutes, I think it'll go a long way to uh, uh, to, to dulling the, the Argentinians' uh, influence of their enthusiasm and their passion and their pride and set the tone for the remainder of the match. And, and, and that's got to be a focus for them as well. They can't just expect to go out there and... You know, throw the ball around like a game of touch. The Argentinians are a very proud, very strong, very robust team. And if you give them a sniff, they're 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 nearly impossible to control. All right, that should do us for this week, Nathan. It's been a pleasure on debut. Very impressive. Um, and to everyone else, enjoy the footy this weekend. This is the sixth episode of In the Know. Thanks to GIO and Sporting News. See you next week.